that long to get to the same, to the right person to make whatever change needed, and it started working. He said, "I just I just set your account to only have one IP." I said, "Well, that's that's great. And that's what I requested days ago." And this was a Friday, Monday, Tuesday. So they were down Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And this is a business that is open all weekend long. So of course, for five days. So how many technicians? Facebook. It was six or seven. And they sent out people, and they tried things, and and it was it was it was a complete mess. Now this is for their main location. I said, okay. When is the second location going to switch? I said, oh well, that's going to be a while because that's considered a different node. That's not even that might be a few weeks out. I said, okay. Well, whenever you, whenever you have a date, call me. I told this to the customer, and I told it to the rep of the ISP. I'm supposed to be on the contact list okay. to get a call. Okay. Um, I get a call. This is like two months later. And what do you think the call was? That they're down. They're down. Of course. <laughs> of course they're down. Have we learned nothing to these people? I asked them. I said, why are you down? Well, we canceled the ISP, and now we're trying to get the new one up. I said, oh, gee whiz. I said, why did you cancel it? Well, they said that we were going to be up today. I said, okay, do you not remember what happened at the other location? Anyway, I said, okay, well, let's see what we can do. This one was even worse, even worse. I think that the bill, I ended up sending them to my customer for the first um, location. Mm -hmm. I think it was eight hours. And that's reduced a lot from the actual time spent. But I cut it down to eight hours. Okay. And, of course, they wanted to send that bill to their ISP. I said, it's fine. You can do whatever you want to do with it. I mean, I need a check from you because we're billing you. Right. You engaged us for services, not the ISP. I can't send. They wanted me to send the bill to the ISP. I said, I can't send the bill to the ISP. They didn't ask us to help you. You asked us to help you. <laughs> so I can't, I'm going to send it to you. And that was a whole other issue. So this happened again. They're down again on a Thursday afternoon. And they need to get back up. I said, okay, what's the IP information? And, of course, they gave me a block of 10 IPs. I said, well, this is what we have. I'm talking to the, the, uh, sorry, the ISP tech. <laughs> no. And I said, we only need one IP. He says, but there's no way for me to give you just one IP. I, I can only give you a block. I said, okay. I can tell you that I have other customers with your provider and they only have one static IP. I said, the other location of this company who you switched over a few months ago has only one IP. He says, well, I don't know what they have set up. I said, well, can you look? Because it's the same customer, just a different location. Right. He says, no, I don't have access to that. I can't look it up. I said, so can you get your supervisor to look this up? Because whatever y'all did on that, on that location, we need to do here, and I don't want to spend three days getting this back up, and they don't want to be down for three days. So I need you to look what they did over there, and we need to do that here. And I only need one IP address. So I get put on hold forever and ever and ever. I come back and he says, "Oh, we can't, we can't give you just one. It's got, it's got to work like this." I said, "Okay." So I told my customer, "You're gonna be down for a while, <laughs> just, just so you know." Because it was a few days last time, and now they tell me they can't do what, what, what they did last time. So just be prepared for an extended outage. And this went back and forth. I told them, we have our own router. They came back and said, well, you can't have your own router. We have to be the router. So you have to take your router out. I said, no, this is a business. We have a, a router. We do VPN. We do content filtering. We can't. We cannot take this out. I said, unless your device can do all this stuff, then we can't take it out. I said, does your, device, does your device do these functions? No. Okay. So we can't we can't take it out. Yeah, but even then, I mean, if you you manage that equipment. I mean, if they put their own equipment, is I mean, are they gonna? Yeah. When, when something goes down, are they gonna manage it? I knew I knew that I knew I knew it didn't do it. That's why I said that. <laughs> gotcha. I knew it did. Uh, so they said no. So I said, so we have to get working. I said, if you're going to be providing support for businesses, businesses want their own routers. Businesses aren't going to let you put in your, your cheap equipment and have that be their router. 
So they they send the tech out on location, and and the is the, I'm sorry, the company wanted me there too. I said I don't really need to be there because once he gets it working on his notebook and verify that's working, then we can just set the route route. Oh no, we want you there. We want you there. I said, okay, fine, enough, good enough. We'll be there. So we sat out there while he was on the phone with AT&T support. And he was on the phone with AT&T support for a while. And this is what they came to. And I can hear him talking. It was pretty funny. He's telling them, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. So this tech was actually pretty good. They sent us out a good tech. He knew this wasn't working. He knew oh, what they okay. wanted so to the, do. Oh, okay. So the ISP te technician was, was talking to home base. Yeah, because when I talked to the ISP, they even they said, okay, we're going to send somebody out. He'll be out tomorrow morning. Okay, gotcha. great. So this guy comes out, and they want me there as well with him to help him get it working. So he's trying everything. It's not working. It's not working. And he's telling them, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, And then he hangs up with them, and I'm talking to him for a little while, and he says, I'm going to tell you what's going on. He said, this is not a DSL connection, first of all. It's, it's a new technology. And he said, you're the first, or this is the first customer we sold this to in this area. He said, so no one in this area has ever set up this kind of connection before. Really? I said, well, that's great. So what do we do? He says, well, I think we determined that the modem that we have cannot do what we need it to do, meaning let your router have a public IP address. He said, this modem is only for residential use. And that's what they sent out. Hmm. He said, so they've got a router like three hours away. That That's what we need. He said, so I'm going to drive halfway. Their guy's going to drive halfway. I'll pick it up and bring it back. And it was like one o'clock in the afternoon at this time. He said, so I'll be back here around four. I said, okay. Well, Call me when you get back, and we'll we'll pick up if you need me. Call me. He didn't call that day. <laughs> he called the next morning. I'll be there at nine o'clock in the morning, about an hour. So fine, we'll we'll meet you there. He goes out there, and he told me, "Now I've never seen this router before. No one has set up a router like this in this area." Is it a router or a modem? It's it's a it's a router. Okay. I said, okay. So what do we can we put it in bridge mode? He said, I'm not sure. I've never seen this interface, so we'll have to get in and look. So he gets in and looks, and he gets on the phone with, I, with I, his support. And he's, he's on the phone again for hours and hours, trying different things. It's not working. It's not working. And around 4.30 in the afternoon, he says, this is not working. I'm going to come back tomorrow. I said, okay, this is another day. The next day, he goes back out. I said, look, if you need us, just call us. I said, I can't, I can't sit here. I can't have my guy sit out here. I told my customer this. We can't sit out here while he's on the phone with support. It's, we're not useful. We're, ha we're having to bill you, and we're just sitting here. And I have other calls that I can actually be accomplishing things on. I said, that's fine. It's fine. So finally, he calls me around 3.30. He says, I can't get it working. It doesn't work. He says, well, I don't know what we're going to do. I said, okay, so let's talk to the customer. Talk to the customer. He told him, I have no idea what's going on. The customer, of course, is completely upset. This is the third day. I think the third day down. This was, no, it was Thursday. Thursday was the first day. For, this is, I, think, this, I think this is Tuesday now. They were down Thursday afternoon. This is now Tuesday. Um, and he says, I, I'm done. I don't know what to do. And, and support doesn't know what to do. So I said, well, let me go over there. We can take a look at your device because he's never let me log into his device. Okay. He was so close to getting it working. He was so close. Oh, when I got there, he left. He had already left. <laughs> he was gone. When he said he had enough, he meant he had enough. <laughs> he, was, he went straight to the local bar. He was gone. So we got there and we logged into, the, into his device and it is a router. And we're looking at this thing and there is no way, there is no bridge mode. There is no bridge mode at all.
And bridge mode for a quick the le- le- recap. Uh, it just turns it into a modem only. There you go. This one way to say it. So there's no routing. It just turns it into a modem. So the public IP address can then be assigned to your router, and this is pastor. Um, the problem with a lot of that stuff is if you get a, a device that you put it in bridge mode, a lot of times the ISP will send a reset signal to that device for whatever reason, or new firmware or something, and then it takes it out of bridge mode. That's when you get a call saying the internet's not working. But anyway, we were looking at it, and it's similar to a watch guard interface in a way that each port on their device can be assigned a different IP address or a different function. So the testing that the tech was doing, he was plugging in, let's just say he plugged in our router into port one. Okay. And he was plugging a notebook into port two. He was trying to assign a static IP address to the notebook while plugged in the port two, and it would not get online. If he would set the notebook to DHCP, it would get online. But the IP address he was getting was a private IP, a 192.168. something, not a public IP. So it seems that it was not going to work, and that's what he was seeing. But I saw inside the device, you could say, okay, in port one, I have this device, and I want you to assign this range, this public IP range to it. Okay? Okay. But here's where he was. He was so close to getting it working. So close. He was in the router picking an IP address of the range and putting it in the router as a static IP address and it wouldn't connect. I saw, and I can't remember the exact change in the router, but I logged into the, his, I'm sorry, his device and I made a change and it was something about assign port one, this one, one of these addresses and I picked, and I picked one of them. Okay. So it had listed the IP addresses that were available, or did you enter one that was within the range? There was a drop-down menu in there. So it says port 1 has this range, but assign it this IP. And there's a drop-down arrow, a drop-down menu with, uh, with the right numbers. Okay. And it said assign port 2 this public IP address. But in the router, he was putting in the, in, in my router, in the watch guard, he was putting in the public IP there. The only thing that had to be changed was put the router, the watch guard, on DHCP. And then at that point, it would grab that public IP address? At that point, I did make a change in the router and his router, to, and I picked one. He didn't have one selected to pick, so it was given a private IP because it wasn't told to give it the public IP. So I told it, give it the public IP, and then set my route to DHCP, and it pulled the right one. And this was now Tuesday afternoon. After being down the Thursday. Since prior. Thursday afternoon. They were so close. And I almost called him back, because I had his phone, I had his cell phone number. I almost called him and told him how close he was. But I figured, well, I don't know if he cares, one. And two, <laughs> he should have stayed. <laughs> because he told me he was going to stay there until I got there. That's true. Now, let me ask you this. If it's pulling off DHCP, what if you bounce the router? Will it grab the same public IP address at that point? Yeah, we, we tried that. Because in the setting in their router, I could set it to give it this one IP. So basically, it's a DHCP range of one. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. So in, I could have set the same thing up in port two. I could have said, let's say I have 65 through 70. In port one, I could say anything connected here, assign it 65.65. In port two, I could have said anything plugged here, assign it 66. Hmm. Port three, assign 67. And if they're not defined, it just gives it a private IP from their interface. So, of course, we don't want any of our computers plugged directly into their device because it'll give it a private IP right. only accessible 
to the internet. 